we are currently in our last stop of the Mei Hong Sung Loop. We are in the town of Pai, and tomorrow we take the last leg back to Chiang Mai. If you are thinking about doing the Mei Hong Sung Loop like we did, we want to answer some of your questions, get into some of the things we learned, and just give you some advice to make your trip as smooth as possible. Let's go. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts and three years ago I moved over here to Thailand. This week I'm with my friend Jacob and we did the Mei Hong Sung loop on motorcycle. Starting in Chiang Mai, heading southwest, eventually going through Mei Hong Sung to Pai and then tomorrow we head back to Chiang Mai. Yeah. If you are thinking about doing the Mei Hong Sung loop and you've got questions, you're not sure exactly how to do it, we've got you covered. Tonight we're gonna answer the best way to plan the trip, what to bring and some things to look out for. So let's get started. So number one, who should do this trip? Because it's definitely not for everyone. I would say for sure you need at least an intermediate level of riding experience on a bike, whether it's on a motorbike or a motorcycle. So on this trip, Jacob wanted to rent motorcycles. We had Honda Rebels, so we had big bikes, not the little motorbike scooters that you see frequently around Thailand. Jacob, what, how much motorcycle experience did you have before this trip? Because you were really good on a bike. Uh, quite a few, yeah. I did, uh, I did some trips to, to Nepal, to Himalayas, and so I'm kind of used to uh, driving a motorcycle. Okay, that explains a lot because this guy handled the roads going up and down mountains like it was nothing. And there may have been one or two or three or four times when I stalled the bike going around corners up hills or like whatever. So and I've ridden bikes a lot around Thailand and islands and other places. So I had a fair amount of experience. I usually am not driving a manual transmission. Um, and that's something that you definitely don't have to do. I would recommend that if you're even questioning what you should get, you should get an automatic transmission motor scooter, probably at least a 150cc, like a Honda Click 150cc or something like that. So you decided you want to do the trip. Now, which direction should you go in? I think most people start in Chiang Mai and they go north to Pai. That's where we are right now. But we decided to go the other way. We headed towards Doi Intanon National Park, which is the southwest direction going clockwise through the loop. And the reason we did that is because that, that section from Chiang Mai to Doi Intanon, that area, is probably the most boring part of the trip. And so we thought it would be best just to get it out of the way right at the beginning because the later part of the trip, Mei Hong Song, Pai, it's more interesting, I think. Plus, if you end up in Pai on the last day of your trip, you can at least hang out there, chill for a while, stay for an extra day, whatever you want to do. And that's exactly what we did, and I think it was the best decision. Okay, so what should you wear while doing this trip? Let me give you a little hint. Do not wear what this guy did. Flip-flops. <laughs> To be fair, he started off in sneakers and they just fell apart and he ended up in flip-flops. Definitely not the preferred footwear, especially when you're riding a bike. It's actually super dangerous. I mean, if you wobble and you go to like brace yourself, you could easily like hurt your foot or whatever. I think it's super dangerous actually wearing sandals. So wear at least good sneakers. I'm assuming you guys aren't gonna wear riding shoes. So at least good sneakers. I myself also wore long pants jeans every day of the trip and you wore shorts um, and it actually saved me because when I had my crash, which if you want to see that video, I'll link it below, um, I would have gotten a lot more hurt if I was wearing shorts. So I'm glad I had long pants on. I would also say that you should bring a long sleeve shirt and a jacket long sleeve shirt because you want to protect yourself from the sun and it also helps just the road there's so much dust and debris and bugs or whatever that's flying at you it helps shield you a little bit but it gets pretty cool at night especially in the mountains i mean when we went up the mountain uh Doi Intanon, it was like 50 degrees celsius what was it in uh celsius it was, uh, 12, 12 celsius yeah 12 celsius so it can get pretty cold in the mountains and you're going to want a jacket and long pants so put that in your bag a big question I had before starting the trip was how long is it going to take because you need to know like how, how many clothes do you need. I brought like three or four days worth of clothes. How many clothes did you bring? I brought like two shirts and two shorts. That's pretty much it. Yeah, the good news is that in pretty much every town you go, they'll have laundry available. It usually costs like 30 or 40 baht per kilogram. So it's really cheap and easy to get laundry done. Um, and they can often do it fast too, like within a few hours. So if you're stopping for lunch or you're chilling for the night, you can definitely get laundry done. And I would actually recommend bringing less clothes and doing that because your bag ends up getting so heavy 
Um, and that's like one of the things I regret is I felt like I packed too much stuff. What time of year should you do this trip? Well, we're doing it at the beginning of March, 2022. And if you've been to Thailand or if you're familiar with Thailand, you'll know that we're pretty much in the middle of burning season here in Northern Thailand. And that's when the farmers burn their fields to prepare for the coming year's uh, growing season. And what that does is it makes the whole atmosphere in Northern Thailand very, very cloudy and smoky. And it's ba that's a bad thing because not only does it reduce the visibility and so you can't really appreciate the views as much, but it's also very bad for your health. Um, luckily, the first few days, they weren't really bad at all, but I noticed the last few days, it was really, really heavy smoke. And when we went up the mountains, you really couldn't see anything. Um, so that spoils that part a little bit. The bright side is there will be a lot less tourists during the burning season, so you've got to kind of make the decision for yourself. If there's a best time to go, I would say it's probably right before the burning season in December or towards the tail end in late March or early April. Just know that as you get more into April, that's the hottest time of the year in Thailand. Um, and so it's going to be pretty miserable if you're out in the sun in the middle of the day in April. So how long will the trip take? How long did you think it was going to take? I was thinking like those, yeah, like six days, something. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. See, I was a little naive and I thought it'd be like four days. Um, it's definitely possible to do in four days, but you really wouldn't enjoy it, I think. You would just be rushing through every town. And if you want to stop and, you know, eat and meet people and kind of like explore and go off the main road a little bit, then it's definitely going to take you more than four days. Today is day six of our trip, but that's only because we had an accident on the first day and we had to wait for a replacement bike. If that didn't happen, this would probably be day five. And so our trip would be like five or six days total instead. But I would say five to seven days is a good estimate. And while we're on the topic of accidents, make sure you pick a good bike rental company because I would say it's not only possible, but probable that something will happen while you're on your trip whether it's a flat tire or the bike engine just dies or you get into an accident or whatever. When you're driving so many kilometers, it's just probable that something is gonna happen, especially if there's more than one of you. So look at reviews, make sure you get a really good bike company and make sure they'll take care of you if something happens. So what kind of driving license do you need to do this kind of trip? Well, do you have a driving license in Thailand? I do, yes. Okay, you have a Thai driving license. Right. Okay, that definitely helps, but you don't need a Thai driving license. In fact, I have an American driving license and I just got an international driving permit from AAA, which is an organization in America. I don't know what organization in your country gives out international driving permits, but it's usually pretty easy. And in the US, it just costs like $35 and you can use it for a year. So I just take that and my American driving license here and I can drive in Thailand. I will say though that you're technically supposed to have a motorcycle license as well, which I do in the US, so I'm fully legal to drive in Thailand. If you only have a regular car driving license, um, it's technically not allowed to drive a motorcycle, though I have a feeling in a lot of cases the police won't care. They'll just be happy that you have the international driving permit because there are checkpoints along the way and it actually didn't happen to us. I was surprised there were no checkpoints. There was one. Where the, not where the police actually like checked our paperwork. And no, they didn't, they did not check, but they, they were there, you don't remember? I, yeah, they were, we, yeah, we did pass a police checkpoint where they, one, yeah. they were checking another car and they right. just waved us through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've read and heard of other accounts. It's very common up here that police set up checkpoints and they check your license and everything. And they'll fine you like 500 baht if you don't have a license. So. It's not a big deal, but the bigger deal is if you have an accident and insurance comes into play, insurance is not gonna cover you if you don't have a proper license. Same thing with health insurance potentially. So definitely make sure your license and insurance and all that is good because the last thing you wanna do is worry about that once you get on the road. So now for the last question, what exactly should you bring on this trip? Well, this is kind of a tough one because on one hand, you wanna bring a lot of things because you're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere with little access to stores or anything like that. It's gonna be hard to get things if you're missing something. On the other hand, if you're traveling by bike, you wanna pack light because you can only put so much in a bag and the heavier it is, the harder it is gonna to be to move around. Like your bag was super light and I wish I packed that light. My bag was way too heavy and annoying and whenever I had to bring it someplace, I just didn't even wanna go because I didn't wanna lug the bag in the heat. So pack as light as possible, but you should bring a few key things. The number one thing I think you should bring is a good bike phone mount so that you can mount your phone 
and so you can look at your GPS, which is something I brought on this trip, but you did not. And we had to kind of scramble before we left Chiang Mai to find a decent one. If you don't know which one to get, I'll put a link to one that I got below. It worked really well and it was very easy to put on the bike without any tools. You just tighten it right onto the handlebars and it stayed put for the whole trip. To go along with that, you're definitely going to want a good power bank because if you're using the GPS all day like we are, you're going to drain your phone battery. I brought like a 5,000, or no, I bought I brought a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. You, you brought a power bank too, and it looked massive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as it uh, it can charge your phone a few times, I think you're okay. You don't need anything too crazy, but just know that you're going to be using your phone a lot, and you don't want to get stranded out in the middle of nowhere with no phone and no GPS. I mentioned it before, but definitely bring a jacket and long pants. It definitely gets cold at night, and also when you go up into the mountains, it drops like 10 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit like we said before it was down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit which was like what like 12, 12 degrees something. Celsius something like that so it can get really really cold especially if you're coming in like December or January it's gonna be even colder than what we experienced you're also gonna want to bring enough cash like at least a decent amount of cash more than you maybe even expect because there aren't gonna be that many ATMs along the way I mean there are a few um, but you're also going to get hit with big fees. So if I were you, I would take like a few hundred dollars, you know, maybe it's probably overkill, but it's better to have it than to not, especially if something happens to your bike and you need to get like a tire repaired or something like that, which, you know, that could definitely happen. So those are some of the big answers on how to prepare for this trip properly. I know with a little preparation, you guys are gonna have a really great trip. It's a one of a kind experience. So if you're thinking about doing it, just take the time to prepare and you'll have a great time. That's it for us here in Pi. If you guys have more questions, definitely drop them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And if you wanna see more videos about our trip or about Thailand, check out this video right here, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next video.